In this video, let's discuss how we can have our sites fully controlled with an external CSS style sheet without tables. This is a more advanced topic in this class, and it's not it's not required. Uh, it's not a required aspect of this class to have your site fully controlled with CSS without tables uh, through the use of divs. Um, but I know that some of you would like to have the have that as a possibility. Uh, there are, as I've said before, there's other classes within the Web Design Certificate that get into the use of CSS and uh, divs with the box model, etc. You know, more so than this class is even designed to do, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a taste. Um, we are going to be having uh, our final exam uh, controlled within a div, but again, I'm going to set that up just kind of like I already set that up for you uh, with your midterm. Um, but this purpose of this video is just to give you a little bit of a background of that and uh, I just want you to know that it's not a required aspect of your term project which you're all building from scratch but I do want to just uh, kind of introduce you guys to the concept because other classes within the certificate are going to be getting into it a little bit more in depth. So in this video we're going to be chatting about you know what exactly is a div and um, you know why would we need to necessarily migrate uh, from tables to divs and then we're also going to check out check out just a very small simple layout just to kind of so I can facilitate this discussion of migrating from tables to divs and just having a site that's fully controlled with CSS. So let's take a second and chat about divs. So a div is just basically a generic block level, block level element. It doesn't convey any meaning about its content. If you, if you contents, if you put uh, content within a div and you don't stylize it, it essentially doesn't do anything. Uh, unlike, for example, like a P element, which signifies a paragraph, or an H1 or an H2 element that would indicate a level one or a level two heading, um, you know, because those actually stylize something. A div doesn't. Um, but what a div does is it makes it easy for us to customize uh, a site to your need, perhaps in terms of layout. Uh, the div element is currently the most common method for identifying structural sections or divisions of a document and for laying out web pages using CSS. Uh, some designers perceive similarities between the P and the div elements seeing them being as uh, interchangeable, but in my opinion, that isn't the case. The P element offers way more sem uh, semantic information. Thus, the div is basically one of those kind of anything goes elements. Um, it can contain any inline or block level, block level elements uh, within it that we would perhaps choose. There's And there's no typical content. A div can basically be used for anything. That's why I call it an anything goes element. And by default, browsers always place a line. One thing we need to remember is that browsers always place a line break uh, before and after the div element. However, this could always be changed with CSS. So just keep that in mind. If you perhaps see your footer or your header not fully up against the top of the page, or if you're wondering why there's extra space, it's because by default of that extra amount of space. I think it's fun to use color sometimes to convey meanings, and that's why uh, well, you probably see me talk about color a lot in this class in terms of cooler and stuff, but that's why I'm using uh, red and blue, just to kind of, not necessarily to mean that tables are bad, um, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to you know upgrade our way of thinking uh, to be able to think about divs in terms of developing site layout. Your required reading this week um, is from an article from Smashing Magazine that talks about um, going from hell using tables to hell using divs, but no, uh, it's not going to be hell using divs. Um, but it is important for me to indicate that using tables for a site layout is not the correct use of the table element. A table element is there for tabular data, like if you're comparing movies based on their director, based on their uh, date that they were made, how much money they made, how popular they made, their rating, stuff like that. That's an appropriate use of a table, not to section off different areas of your site, like a header and a footer and a menu, etc. But don't worry, you're not alone. Lots of sites are out there that do have their sites designed in tables. Um, it's kind of an early thing in web design. That's the way that lots of design site designs were made originally, were in tables. Um, but then uh, back around 2008, um, maybe even just a little bit earlier, that's when the web started just the web design. Our web design started evolving more so to the use of tables. So let's take a look real quick at some simple uh, layouts. One, you know, without any layout whatsoever, and then one with uh, a layout being within a table. And then we're actually going to take a look at that exact same layout, but instead of it being in a table, it's going to be within uh, different divisions. So if you're following along with me and you downloaded the zip and opened it up on your desktop, we have this sample layout folder. Within here, we have four different files for us to explore. 
the first one let's take a look at. Let's take a look at the no layout one. Uh, notice up here that the title of the page I have is sample no layout. This is just basically a very basic page with no layout whatsoever. We do have an H1, we do have paragraphs here. We can right click, we can view the source, and then as a source here we see that that's the case. We just have just a simple H1, simple paragraph, and uh, the rest of the content is pretty straightforward. There's basically no layout. Now the, so let's take a look at the uh, Let's take a look at the table layout. So let's say we wanted to stylize this content within a template. So we're going to open up the table layout. So I'm going to right click, open with Firefox, and then now I have this file as sample table layout. So now our, our page actually looks pretty good. We have basically what would be a header up here. Then we also have maybe an area over here that would be for the menu. And then we have just some main content here in the middle. And then we also have a footer. We have different colors here to help us easily understand where the boundaries of the layout are. So we can right click and view the page source. And here we see that this is all within a template. So we have our table. Our table is uh, 80 pixels wide. It doesn't have a border. It doesn't have spacing. It doesn't have padding. That's just to make sure that everything just is in there as it should because by default there is going to be an extra little bit of padding between the cells so we don't want that so that's why we have that set to zero. We could control this with the CSS but I'm not doing that here within this example. And then we have our row, we gave our row a color. This is for our um, this is for our web page title which is basically up there in the header and then we also have our, uh, let's see, then we also have uh, an area for our menu, we gave that a different color and then we have our area for our body and then we come down here and then we eventually will have a footer. So that's within a table. Now let's take a look at this same content organized within a div. So we can open up our one that's called div layout. So here sample div layout. It looks very similar um, but then th there is some different formatting going on here in terms of what happens when we have our H1 within our table cell. We have extra amounts of padding there. Uh, but anyways, let's just take a look at just the sample layout. So now what we have here is we have our basically the same content uh, within different divisions of the page. So this is its own division. This is the this can be the header division. This over here is the menu area that we've divisioned out of our page. Then this is the content area, and then this here right here would be the footer area. We can take a look at our code. Well, I'm sorry, I just viewed the selection. I need to look at the whole page source. And here we have, notice here we have these different divisions set up. And so we've all given them, we've given them an ID. So for example, ID of header, we have the ID of menu, and we have the ID of, con of content. And I've also commented this stuff to help you uh, easily see where these things are. But again, these are just different divisions. So instead of tables, uh, a table with uh, rows and uh, data, we just have uh, these various divisions. So now what I would suggest doing is going and opening up the page that's called, let me, see, let me get it here real quick. Opening up the page is called No Layout Div Template. And so if you take a look at this code, I have it set up to where all of the IDs are already set up for you, but I don't have the styles. So I think it would be good practice for you to go open the page up in Notepad++. So let's do that. Open this page up in Notepad++ and also open up the div layout up in Notepad++ and I would explore plugging in these various styles that you have here from CSS and putting them in over here and just seeing how they work and just start exploring with the page and then to conclude just make sure that you go through and read the required reading this week it'll give you a little bit more background uh, table layouts versus div layouts uh, from from hell to hell. This will just kind of help you uh, understand more about what I'm talking about and in terms of designing your pages within divs. And then also don't forget the Linda videos that you're watching um, that we've watched before uh, because um, it talks specifically about migrating the Groundswell website from being in a table layout to being in a div layout. So uh, good luck learning and exploring divs. Again, this isn't a required aspect of the class, but I just want to make sure and set you up so you're prepared for um, I mean, it's not a required aspect of the term project, and in terms of the final exam, which you're going to be doing next week, um, I'm going to have it already set up for you, but I just want to give you a little bit of background. So let the class, know, class or I know if you have any questions. Have a good day.